If you're anything like my church, you either have displays in your lobby or you want displays in your lobby because you want to be able to show up-to-date information, you want to be able to use them to maybe decorate the area based on the theme of the series that you're going through, or you want to have schedules or maps or any other type of information showing at a glance to anybody in your building. But you also don't want to manage all of this by hand or have a bunch of pamphlets in your front lobby. And if you're anything like my church, you also don't want to spend an arm and a leg for this or run super dedicated infrastructure in order to support this. I ended up trying a ton of different digital signage solutions in order to finally end up on the one that we use now, a piece of software called InfoBeamer. And it runs on this, a little Raspberry Pi. We end up paying about $7 per display per month, which definitely adds up but compared to a lot of the other options out there is really not crazy, especially considering that it gives us complete remote control over those TVs, schedules, auto power off, the ability to play 4K video, among so many other things. Honestly, the flexibility is amazing. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the reason we chose InvoBeamer, as well as how to actually get it set up and running in your church. So first off, the why. We recently hung up a few screens in our lobby in order to, yeah, kind of, help us be able to decorate based on what's going on in our church. We have a very multi-purpose space, and so it's nice to be able to put up different signage based on what event is going on. We used to have these big banners that would go up on the wall, and we would change them out depending on the season of our church, but that got to be pretty unwieldy, and where do you store things that are that big? So instead, in a move to kind of bring our church into the modern era, we replaced them with very large uh, Samsung TVs. The problem is, how do you actually display content on those? We started out by just loading some things onto a thumb drive, putting those on the TVs and letting it roll. And this worked okay, as long as you didn't need to change those frequently. It's very hard to get up and reach and get those flash drives. And um, you didn't have super great control over how it actually ran those videos. And again, they were just videos running. You didn't really have a lot of control over scheduling or how long things lasted or whatever. You had to do a lot of things manually. We knew this wasn't a long-term solution, but it's what we did right at the beginning in order to just kind of get things going. We figured it would be pretty great to have a central video hub that was feeding all of those screens, but that would have required some sort of video hub for one, but also running cabling to all the different TVs in the lobby and any new ones we might wanna put in in the rest of our building. And that was kind of a non-starter. It was gonna be a lot of work and the way that our building is set up, it just wasn't really feasible. So we got looking at different digital signage options and we tried out, I mean, three or four of them in the lobby. A lot of them worked most of the way, but had a few fatal flaws that made us kind of move away from them. For example, we tried Sign Presenter and Yodec and both of those actually worked pretty well. It allowed scheduling, allowed us to upload all sorts of different content and do everything remotely through some sort of online portal, et cetera, et cetera. They had so many great features and they all ran on little cheap Amazon Fire Sticks. You just download the app, connect it to your account and you're off to the races, they all just kind of work. The problem we ran into is that we wanted to display videos on our screens, specifically like looping videos that had graphics or other just information or videos from our church to kind of show off what it's like to first time guests. Now, the problem we ran into was actually looping 4K video on these Fire Stick devices. They just really couldn't handle it for the most part. Either they would compress the crap out of them, so they looked all pixelated and gross and nothing like the actual original video files we uploaded, or there was kind of this weird jittery pause between the video as it was loading it again, which was obviously not great. Or finally, the video files were just too big. Now, a lot of these services advertise how much storage that you can use, and that's great, but it's also a little bit deceiving because most of the time what it's referring to is the amount of cloud storage that you have in the service itself. It's not referring to the amount of storage you can use on the Fire Stick at a time. Each of these apps is only relegated a certain amount of the Fire Stick storage. So even if you buy the top of the line Fire Stick, you get a very small amount of hard drive space to actually play with when the app is running. So what we ran into is when we try to upload, say, a two minute looping 4K video that we wanted it to display on our screens, the Fire Stick just didn't have enough space to allocate to the app, which meant it would never load and it would never show that video. This was never super clear to us when actually signing up for some of these services, so I just wanna let you know about that now. It's kind of a sneaky little limitation on some of these. But again, even if they did allow the videos, a lot of times they just didn't really look that good. They didn't look sharp, they didn't look crisp. For example, going back to when we had them on the flash drives, 
It was playing the raw video file that was on that drive, and so it looked very clean. And when we switched over to these hosted services, it just didn't look that way anymore. We tried so many different services and they all kind of ran into these different problems. They were great if you wanted to display static images or text or even some of the built-in like weather widgets and whatever else that they had. But if you wanted to display 4K video looping smoothly, crisply, they just weren't really an option. So hear me when I say that, there are great options out there, but what we needed specifically, none of them were really fitting. Until one day, I finally came across this piece of software called InfoBeamer. And you know, just looking at their website, I knew this was going to be a little bit more complicated of a software, but I was hoping that that meant we had a little bit more control over things, and I was right. So first of all, it doesn't run on a Fire Stick. Um, it's not super, super easy consumer device. Instead, it runs on a Raspberry Pi, which if you're not familiar with these, um, this one's in a little case, but you get the idea, it's pretty tiny. Um, it's actually what's known as a single board computer. So there's a little circuit board, and then it's got a bunch of inputs and outputs on here, USB ports, Ethernet port, and some uh, micro HDMI ports. So this is a little full computer, but it doesn't have a lot of actual power to it, which is great when you're using them for a single purpose, such as driving a lobby screen. Well, InfoBeamer actually just installs on these little guys with their image that you can download. And once you have it installed, you can manage it through their web portal, just like all of these other Amazon Fire Stick solutions. So we booted this up for the first time. And honestly, after we kind of got through the initial hurdle of getting it set up, these have worked flawlessly. At this point, we've used them for months. I'd have to go back and check exactly how many months, but they have had little hiccups here and there, but for the most part, they've kind of just been smooth and they check off every box that we have. They allow scheduling. They will auto power off our TVs if they're not being used on an active schedule. They will loop 4K video seamlessly. You can have as much storage as you want because you put in your own SD card as a hard drive. I mean, honestly, it does everything that the other services do, but also a little bit more and also a little bit better. I wouldn't say it's for everyone. It is slightly more complex to set up, but only slightly. And I'm gonna show you that later in this video. But if you're looking for a solution for your lobby screens, then definitely check out InfoBeamer. One other thing about them is the pricing model. So most of these services price on just a per screen per month price and you'll see them usually in the area of about $10 a month or so per screen. Now, that's regardless of how much you use it or how much storage you're using, et cetera, et cetera. InfoBeamer is a little bit different. They actually just charge you a fee per the device, but then also a fee for the amount of storage that you're using. So if you have few devices, but a lot of storage, or a lot of devices, but a little bit of storage, you could actually end up paying about the same amount of money per month. Basically, you're actually paying for what you use. Now again, as long as you're keeping your files kind of cleaned up and you're not doing anything super crazy, that price can be super reasonable. For example, again, we're doing 4K videos and we have something running on our screens just about all the time, but we clean up old files from old message series that we're not doing anymore. And we end up paying right around $7 per screen per month, which beats out most of the other options I was looking at. One thing to note, um, all of the pricing is in euros because um, I imagine this was developed by somebody in Europe. Uh, I'm sure I could look that up and figure out exactly where, but just something to note, um, if that seems weird to you, just don't worry, it's totally fine. We've been using this for months and haven't had any issues, but it is something you have to convert in your head as you're kind of doing those prices. This might be for you, and if it is, let's go ahead and take a look at how you actually set it up. So I'll be running this on my computer, and then I've got a few cables here that we will plug this into a monitor and also record the output so you can see what it's doing. So first, you just go on to infobeamer.com and you will create an account for free. Once you have your account, you'll go ahead and actually just log into that. So I already have one here. So you can see, I already have a little bit of data in here, but if you don't, obviously it's a brand new account, you won't, don't worry about that. So we want to actually get our first Raspberry Pi set up to display on our screen. So we'll go over to devices here, and it says no devices registered yet, and it actually gives you uh, instructions on how to do this. So let's go over to download InfoBeamer software, great and there's a little link here to documentation. So we'll click that and we will download this file. And then we'll go over to this page. So all you really need is your Raspberry Pi and a micro SD card. They also have a page on all of the different hardware recommendations based on what it is you're trying to run. There's lots of different models of Raspberry Pis. This one is a Pi 4, B plus, I don't really remember, it's about 60 bucks. But supposedly this will run all the way down to the Pi Zero, their smallest version that runs closer to $30 all in. 
So it just kind of depends on what it is that you actually need. But anyways, once you've downloaded this software, you can go ahead and put your little micro SD card in your computer. All you have to do is unzip the folder that you downloaded, open it up and take all of those files and drag them directly to your SD card. Now that's gonna take just a second to copy over. None of them are necessarily super huge files. Now, once that's done, you can actually just eject that SD card. Now we'll pop that guy out and I just hate these little adapters. They're really great, but they're really hard. There we go. And your Raspberry Pi actually has a place for it down on the bottom. And so this SD card basically acts as the hard drive on your Raspberry Pi. Next, you will plug in a display for your Raspberry Pi into your little display output. And you will plug in your power. And finally, turn this little guy on. Now you can see it actually starting to boot up. And basically what this is doing is actually just installing the software directly onto the Raspberry Pi. So you say, you see it says do not remove power for the next minute. So it's just getting ready to install the InfoBeamer software directly onto this Raspberry Pi. So you just sit back and uh, let it do its thing. Great, look at that. InfoBeamer, beautiful. Now, something that I forgot to mention and forgot to do is you actually uh, need to connect this to your network before doing this because you actually control this over um, the internet. So I need to go grab an ethernet cable and plug it into this. I'll be right back. Now here's the thing, once this is all set up, you can actually connect it to a Wi-Fi network so you don't need to actually have it plugged into ethernet in order for it to work. We actually run them off of Wi-Fi at our church. Even though Ethernet is definitely recommended for speeds and stability purposes, sometimes it's just easier to have it behind a TV and be on Wi-Fi. Great, now that it's connected to the internet, we can see it gave us a pin that we are going to then take to back to infobeamer.com. And jump in here back to our devices tab. And let's say register a new device. So now this is when we're going to actually type in the pin that is on the screen. We're gonna see 05 fe cc 6 and we will just say test display my house and register device. So once that happens, you can see here, it's now connected waiting for content. So now we actually need to create some content and send it over to that Pi. Going back into InfoBeamer, let's just do something really simple. And this is where InfoBeamer gets a little bit more complicated is the actual setting of content. There are a lot of blog posts and information about how to do this, but the gist of it is you use things called setups and packages and playlists to actually do all of this. I'm not going to go super in depth on how to actually set all of these up because it's going to depend on your exact use case. But for example, if we look at this second player test setup, we can see it's got a playlist that it wants to display. So we will go up to assign to devices and we will assign it to our test display. Great, and now that it is assigned, we can see here that it is fetching assets, fetching all these files, and then pretty soon here, it will start actually displaying that playlist on our screen. And there we go. A beautiful YouTube thumbnail that if you haven't seen, go check out that video because um, it was probably pretty good, I don't know. And you can see here, it's going to cycle through these images, beautiful. And just in case you guys, you know, don't understand what this actually looks like, I'll record a little snippet on my phone so you can kind of see this actually playing on this display. Great, look at that, beautiful. Look at this guy, look at this handsome guy. And down there is InfoBeamer. So that's it, now we're up and running with content on our screens and we can go ahead and actually set up schedules and all sorts of things. So for example, if we wanna look at that, we can look at a schedule I've already made here and take a look and you can actually see it has power set up at certain times and this test playlist set up at certain times. And let's say I wanna add a different piece of the schedule. Well, I can just add a scheduled setup and let's say select test and then I can just drag it on my calendar to repeat weekly or I can do all sorts of things for scheduling. And it's going to automatically actually pull in those setups which are kind of like playlists but not exactly, they use different terminology and display them on the screen. So for example, at our church, we actually have a schedule for every single week based on what events we have weekly. So on Sunday mornings at 4 a.m. or something, it automatically starts showing our Sunday morning playlists with whatever it is that we're doing for that particular sermon series. And then for example, on Monday nights, it starts showing alpha on the displays without us ever having to touch anything because we've built that into the schedule. It's super powerful and 
in the off times, so usually after 11 p.m. or so, we actually just set it to power off the screens. And not only does that power off the display and have it go black, but it actually powers off the TVs themselves, so that way they are not actually wasting all of their screens, and if you're using OLEDs, we're not getting any burn in or anything like that. So it's super powerful and does kind of everything that you need it to do. If we dig into this, you actually have different packages that you can add and a whole store of them based on what it is you're trying to do. So if you wanna display a web browser or just HD images or videos or a schedule reception screen, I mean, live streaming, so you can actually stream directly to these screens, whatever it is you wanna do, there's probably a package that will do it or some combination of packages to make it happen. Like it says here, you can also build it yourself because it's an open platform. So if you have the technical know-how to actually make this happen, great, you can do that. There's also third-party packages and other such things if you're really trying to find other things that are not necessarily uh, core packages. So there you have it. Lobby screens, no problem. Using a simple little Raspberry Pi like this and InfoBeamer, you can actually just set everything up super easily, have it be super reliable and completely controllable in the cloud. I meant to show you guys this, but also if you hop into device and actually go and look at your device, you can see all sorts of different information about it. So not only can you see a live snapshot of what's going on, but you get information like the uptime, you can actually reboot them, update the pies remotely, and see all sorts of other information. You can also change things like, say here, we can have it connect to Wi-Fi instead and put in our credentials there. So again, it's very powerful and gives you kind of all of the control you actually need, things that are maybe kind of obfuscated away in some of these other platforms. This gives you direct control over these things, which can be a little bit dangerous, but also, you know, if you like the freedom to actually control your devices, InfoBeamer allows you to do that. And like you guys saw, I mean, we got this set up in what, five minutes? After I rambled on and on and on and on about all the different things that I've tried out over the past months. So anyway, this has been awesome. And it's not just for technical people. I set it up in our church, but I don't touch it anymore. One of my coworkers who actually does all of the social media and kind of design things actually sets up these screens weekly in order to display what they need to display and barely ever needs any help from me to actually make that happen. So it's something that definitely any kind of staff or volunteer can set up and configure this once you kind of get the basic foundation laid for them. Anyway, I feel like I've been rambling. If this is interesting to you guys, there's gonna be links in the description to go buy this equipment and to go check out InfoBeamer for yourself. So. Anyway, until next time.